It's all about peace, spreading love in the world. So I gotta represent rebels for joy, positivity. You know that we're all about it. Magic happens when you align your purpose, passion, and power. Just believe in your greatness. I know for sure the light that you radiate too strong to ignore. Emotional revolution, it's time that we start. Love, we need more. We are rebels for joy. Woo! Hey sister, welcome back to Rebels for Joy, where we are showing up, bringing you the opportunity to learn about your purpose, passion, and power, all fueled by joy. And speaking of joy, I have the joy and the honor of being with my soul sister, Carrie Keating, who I'm going to just give you the title of superwoman, because she actually <laughs> is. <laughs> um, and Carrie, oh my gosh, it is such a literally a joy, like, which seems like so like, yeah, of course, Jill, like that's the name of the podcast, but like such a joy to have you here because you are joy to me in my life. And I just love you so much. So hi. Hi. Oh my gosh. I love you so much. I'm so excited to be here and have this conversation with you. And it is my joy and my honor to just share space with you this morning because it's been a minute. It has been a minute. And like really had, I mean, we just spent 30 minutes just catching up before we put the <laughs> but I just love you so much and I love I love just who you are and how you show up and what you bring to the world. So when you you asked me to come on here, I was like, oh hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. I know. And I was sharing with you um because I, I didn't even like say it's Jillian. And I'm assuming our people know our name our voices by now, but I was sharing with you earlier that Bonnie and I are probably gonna divide and conquer when it comes to interviews, just because with three or four people on, it can get really like, oh my gosh, like we all want to say something at the same time, which is kind of difficult in interview style with a podcast, but um, I'm just so freaking grateful that I get to spend this time with you and knowing what you and I have like gone through and grown through ever since we've known each other. It's just so cool that now I'm like, oh my gosh, and I get to introduce you to Bonnie and we get to do all these amazing things together in different realms than we could have ever imagined. And oh, as a byproduct, our listeners get to like really soak you in as well. It's just so exciting. Mm, it really is. And like, just so you guys know, so Jillian and I were in a mastermind together mm -hmm. over the last year and got to know each other really intimately. We roomed together. Yeah. We shared a lot of space together, both, both energetically and physically. And, and just got to know each other on such an intimate level and got to really support each other through a very, it was a very tumultuous year for me. It yeah, was a very same. tumultuous year for you. <laughs> <laughs> and so to be able to uh, see the highest version of someone and have the honor of holding them up to that, yeah. that's what you did for me over the last year and continue to do for, for me. And I, I hope I do that for you, but absolutely, that, it's like, I feel like we should start there. So people actually know the depth of our relationship, that soul, soul level, because it really is uh, so important. Number one, to have friends and, and support like this, but number two, to be able to come on the outside or come on the back end of a year like that and to be, to talk about joy. Yes. Yes. Amazing. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Carrie and I have, we've just, we've been through the ringer and we want to share a little bit about that today. We want to talk about that. But first you told me that you have a joke and I let you in on the secret that Bonnie and I like opening up our, our podcast with a joke because like, hi, like what's better than a corny joke to like really kick things off with? Like, oh so yeah, so I'm excited because I wouldn't let Carrie tell me what her joke was before. So, all right, bring it on. I'm braced. Tell me. <laughs> okay. It's definitely like a Laffy Taffy type joke. I don't even know where I heard it the first time, but okay. What do you call a deer with no eyes? I have no idea. Exactly. No idea. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. What do you call a deer with no eyes and no legs? Oh gosh. Still no idea. Still no idea. <laughs> so true. Oh my gosh. My son is going to love that. Do your boys love that? <laughs> yeah, they don't really get it. You would no. think it's like a total little boy joke, but I, I, I think it was a Laffy Taffy joke. I have no idea, but oh it my is my, my go-to. And I'm always shocked that people haven't heard it because I say it so much. I literally, <laughs> well, I haven't heard it to the fact that I almost said it. 
but like really incorrectly. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love it. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so good. So actually let's just give a little background about you, Carrie. You are a mom to three boys. Mm -hmm. You currently reside in California, which we're going to get into how amazing and, and special and magical and pertinent that is to this conversation in just a minute here. But tell us a little bit about you because like I said, you're actually freaking superwoman and you are changing the lives of so many other superwomen. So just give us like the high view. Hi, I'm Carrie and I'm amazing. And this is what I do to be so amazing. <laughs> okay. So I <laughs> no am <pressure>. Carrie Keating. <laughs> yeah. I have three boys. I should say we have, my husband, Scott and I have three boys yeah. under the age of seven. Uh, five years ago, I was in a very amazing corporate job. I had the six figure salary that came along with the six figure stress. I had two boys under the age of two and we were paying $30,000 a year in childcare. And I was like, oh my gosh, something's got to give. I yes. had worked for 17 years to get into my career and get into a place where, I mean, I worked at Nike. So it was like, it, it's when, once you're there, you're kind of a lifer. Totally. I can, the I can absolutely company. see that. Yeah. <laughs> like the 401k, the, um, the stock options, like the 10 year plan of like, you know, exactly where you're going to be in 10 years. And while I had worked really, really hard to get that and, and, and being a really amazing employee was my identity. I knew I wanted to be more available for my kids. And I knew I wanted to be there to pick up my kids from from school. I didn't want a nanny picking them up from school. Not that there's any, anything wrong with that. I just, my mom had always picked us up from school. She didn't work, but she'd always picked us up from school. And I, and I wanted that for myself. Yeah. And so I didn't really know how that was going to turn out, what that was going to look like, but I ended up becoming an accidental entrepreneur with a network marketing company, left my job just three minutes after I started using and sharing some products, some health and wellness products. And about a year later, I was really struggling. I made a really awesome employee, but I absolutely sucked at being an entrepreneur. <laughs> so like, you hear that a lot, right? And, and, but people forget this. When you become an entrepreneur, not only do you continue to be an employee, you also got to become the boss. And yeah. you need to be able to do both simultaneously. And that's freaking hard sometimes. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you're an employee, you know where the line is. Yes. And so, you know, you know, the structure, you know where the line is. So you know how to go above the line. Yeah. And that's where I lived above the line. I lived beyond the line. I, I did all of the things beyond the line. And so I thought I would be awesome. I had a business degree. I had, I was a self starter, but all within the confines and the structure of the nine to five paradigm. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, when I became an entrepreneur, I'm like, there's no lines. Like yeah. I, I don't even know who I am right now. And so even in something like network marketing, where you do get the tracks to run on, it can still be really challenging because you've never built a personal brand because yeah. while there is the to do's of this is how you grow a network marketing business. You're also trying to become someone who can attract the right people. Right. And so there's no guardrails or lines in terms of how to do that and how to show up. And not only that, my identity was changing. I had never been a working mom, a work from home mom. I ended up having a third baby <laughs> and yeah. I was just really stuck. And so I, I knew I needed help. I ended up joining, joining a membership program. And in that membership program, found some clarity, some confidence and hired a coach. And she was actually an intuitive, not really a coach, mm -hmm. but she was a spiritual mentor. And she ended up just giving me this download of, you have so much business acumen. You should be helping people with, with business. So cool. And I'm like, okay, but I don't have a website and I don't have a certification. How does that look like? And yeah. so uh, she's like, put a post on Facebook because you do have an audience who is ready to buy from you. Yeah. And the next day I had two paying clients and that launched my coaching business. And so I have been coaching now for four years mm -hmm. and I do, I am like a branding expert. So this idea of like, like really not knowing who you are and how you show up and what, yeah like essentially your superpower. Mm -hmm. I help people breathe life into that. And then I also am super big on the foundational structure of business and like how to create something that's actually scalable. Uh, you know, everything from like profit and loss statements to, and, and like really understanding and owning the numbers to, yeah. uh, to identifying who you are and the problem that you solve and who you serve. And so really calling up the people who are like, wow, I accidentally came into this or 
I, I, I know I, I'm good at this, but I just don't know how to become a mature business owner. Yeah. I hold that space for people and help invite them up and into that. And so, you, do, you do it so beautifully too. Like, um, friends follow Carrie on Instagram at Carrie Keating. Uh, but she, her, your stories are so brilliant because you speak directly to your person and you even share questions that they ask. Like, I remember seeing someone ask you, I've never, I've never done this before. I have a business idea, but I don't know the first place to start. And I like, can I actually, can you help me? And you're like, girl, yeah, because I was there. And not only are we going to help you from the very beginning, both understand who you truly are and then build the business from there, but you just speak as if you are always holding somebody's hand. And it's so refreshing because you're a baller. Like, you know what you're freaking doing, but you're also so deeply connected to every single person you connect with because you can see yourself in mm -hmm. all of them. Like, that's what I truly feel when I watch you. Oh, thank you. Well, and that's, that's really like the spirit of my brand. Like, yeah. and that's, I think that's where I really differentiate myself. Like I really help people tap into the spirit and the, like the ethos of their brand. And for me, it's, it's helping more people walk in purpose and on purpose. And it doesn't mean it, it doesn't matter if you have a full-time job, if you don't work and you have like the craziest job of all, which is being a full-time mom. Yeah. Uh, if you have a business that you operate yourself, it doesn't matter what you do. Yeah. My goal is to help you get in purpose and on purpose. And if that's, that means that I'm the coach for you, or I can give you some direction of where to go. It's, like that's the space that I live in is like, let's just get more people. Like the world will be better if more of us can be walking in our joy. Yes. And yes. so if, if, if I'm a piece of that puzzle for you, awesome. And if I'm not, you better believe I'm going to help you find it. Yeah. Oh, you're just a magical unicorn and I'm oh. so grateful. So thank you for yeah. sharing that. And now like, let's, let's get into you because I want to know, I mean, we are, we are on the rebels for joy podcast mm -hmm. and you and I both know, I mean, so much of what we do is helping women to rise is helping women to, and you do so specifically, you know, it's getting to know who you are so you can say your branding so you can embody your branding and put your messaging out there in a business way. And for me, it's like, it's helping you do that deep soul digging, soul diving work that really helps you to crack open and learn how to love yourself. And at the core of that, it's, we almost have to be rebellious to look at who we truly are in today's day and age with the programming that we have from our childhood, from our parents, like generations before us. And then also like the expectations of the world today. So I'm just so excited because I want to know what does being a rebel for joy mean to you in your personal story? Mm -hmm. So I think for me, so <laughs> Oh gosh, where do I even begin? So uh, my father was a minister, so I am just a re rebel by label. Yes, yes. <laughs> I am the pastor's daughter, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so I have always been rebellious, but I, I think where I, what comes through for me right now is this idea of not being a packaged up version of everyone else Yeah. and really giving myself the time and the space to find my own pace in this business world, yeah. you know, for, for people who are out there building a business or building an ecosystem that supports this kind of new awareness around who they want to show up as mm -hmm. it can be really challenging to feel like you have to do it as fast as everyone else seems like they're doing it. Totally. And so for me, like I consciously, like even I just, I just launched a podcast episode about this today. Like I consciously chose to not put out any programs or anything during the month of January because I did not want to get caught up in the swirl mm -hmm. that is new year, new you, new hustle, new, new, all of this stuff. Like I'm in this space. Can I curse on this show? Of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in this space of like, no, fuck the hustle. Yeah. I'm going to find my own pace mm -hmm. and I'm going to find what's right for me. And so it's really about consciously choosing to rebel against the, the status quo right now, which is go harder, go faster, go do this. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to tap into who I am mm -hmm. and what's right for me and the cycle that I'm in. Because especially as a mom, like there was a season 
I, I look back and I actually just posted about this. Like I look back at when my kids were, when I had three under three and I'm like trying to get this business off the ground and I'm so focused on getting this business off the ground that I'm not actually being present to the people who are right in front of me. Totally. And that's causing me frustration. And I just look back at those years and I'm like, gosh, I wish I could go back because it goes by so fast. Yeah. I mean, my youngest is three, so we're still in it. Right. But finding my pace now and finding this space of like, no, I've got to be able to come back in here. I've got to be able to tap back into what's right for me right now. And when I do that and I release expectations of how my life should look, mm -hmm. it's so much more spacious. It's so much more joyful. It's so much more full. And I'm so much more present yeah. that when I reach the goals of my business of serving the tens of thousands of people, of being on stage in front of, you know, however many people, of all of the, the things, the vision that I've seen since I was so young, it's going to be that much sweeter knowing that I did it my way. Yes. And I love so much that what you said is just so on point with what Bonnie and I share a lot. It's like, it's time to rebel against mediocrity. It's time to rebel. And that mediocrity for you, what I'm hearing is that that mediocrity is literally doing what everybody else is doing because everybody else is doing it. And guess what? It's freaking easier to do it that way sometimes until it's not, until you can feel in your soul that I just can't do it like that anymore. So I'm like celebrating right along with you because when we can finally like feel that little voice and hear that little voice of like, and eh, that doesn't work for me so much anymore. It frees us, but we feel that we have to be rebellious in order to go for it. Yeah. Like you literally feel like I, I was, I was just talking about this yesterday and I love how synchronistic, synchronistic it all is. Yeah. But, um, there was a time where I just so struggled not being a package up version of everyone else. Like I literally was like, I can't do it like them. I can't do it like them. I can't. Yeah. And I was so focused on that, that I was also pushing my own authentic voice down yes. and I couldn't hear myself through that noise, even though my intention was to let my, allow my, my, my voice to come through by resisting and, and putting pressure on that. I was not allowing my, my authentic voice to come through. Cause here's the thing, like whether you have a business or not, like, I think you can understand this when we, when we launch a business or we launch a brand or we launch anything, in the beginning, especially when there's no lines, right? In this entrepreneur space, yeah. we do copy other people because we're just modeling what we're doing after them. And yes. then you go to phase two where it's like, okay, I'm copying you, but I'm also infusing my own voice in it, mm -hmm. right? And then we go to phase three. And phase three is like, fuck all that. Like, I'm going to do this my way based on what my clients want, based on what my people want, based on what I want and how I want to live my life. Yeah. And the people who are doing it well, and the people are, who are truly enjoying it are in that phase three. And my goal is to get people to skip phase one and two and just go right to phase three. That's so and start awesome. From that authentic space. So yeah. And you're so right because that can be applied to any area of life, like even motherhood, right? Like mm -hmm. sit on Facebook for about 18 seconds, scroll on through and you can compare yourself to what everybody else is doing in terms of how they're mothering, what they're giving their babies to eat, what their kids are wearing as opposed to yours. It is so easy to say, oh, well, that's the, like the cool thing to do. So I should start to mother like that. And as you do that, you, I mean, it happens every time you lose touch with your own values as a mother, you start to feel more antsy and anxious because you're not actually acting in the way that you naturally and intuitively want to mother. And then everyone else around you, most especially your children are antsy and anxious too, because they're like, who is this person that's mothering me? That's clearly not doing it from a space that is natural of her. And of course they don't have the words for that, but they feel the energy and it's so powerful. Yeah. Because you're essentially building your life out of fear. Yeah. Like you, you're so afraid that the way that you truly want to do it is wrong. Yeah. That you, you build an ecosystem that supports a completely alternate version of you Yeah. versus like getting clear on what it is. And it's scary. It's yeah. so scary to like know yourself and be open to the feedback and open to pivoting and open to change, especially when people are out there celebrating these like perfectly polished versions of themselves. Right. right? right. And when you say like, oh, well, I'm, I am not perfect. You know, it's like. Yeah. Okay. Are you just saying that because <laughs> that's 
part of the whole, the whole thing? Or right. are, are you embracing that and saying right. like, I'm, I'm willing to figure this out. And as long as I'm 1% better today than I am than I was yesterday, then that's good for me. And I think finding that space and finding that pace, yes. finding the pace and your own natural pace of, no, this is how I want a mother. No, this is how I want to discipline. No, this is how I want to run my business. This is what, how I want to have relationships. This is how I want to have intimacy. I mean, it literally bleeds into Anything. every single thing that you're doing. This is how I want to nourish myself. And it's like, we let, when we can let go of these expectations of that we are projecting on everyone else, that everyone else is projecting on us all there is is appreciation all there is is appreciation for how your life is working for you and that's the through line always of my life because i've been through through some tough shit yeah and i like it is it is always working for me like and i firmly believe that anytime something goes wrong even last week i was like in this launch and i don't know how many times i google searched full-time jobs Like, which, which is just an indicator that I'm like finally on the verge of the breakthrough. Totally. You know? <laughs> but I, I was just, I was messaging Tori every day, like in tears, like I'm done with this. I'm over it. And it's just like, but then we remind ourselves, like it's working for me. Like, what is the lesson here? Why did I call this experience in? What can it teach me? And how can I use this to teach other women to continue to step in purpose and on purpose. Oh, it's so good. So many nuggets. Thank you for that. I want to go back to <laughs> the comment that you made about having been through some shit. Yep. Um, and I really want to know, so this is like, this is the core of what we want to get to with these interviews and with these conversations. I really want to know, like as, as, and you can pull from any example you want. It can be business related. It can be personal. It can be whatever you feel, whatever's calling to you. But would you please tell us a story about a time that you were robbed of joy? We want to know what happened. And then we want to know what you did to reclaim your joy because okay. so many of us think that life is happening to us and not for us. And you just said that the through line of everything is appreciation. And like, here it is friends. That means appreciating the really rocky times too, as hard as that is to comprehend. So Carrie, I'd love for you to tell us a story about something or a situation or whatever you want that robbed you of joy. And then like, what happened? What did you do? And then what did you do to reclaim your joy and get back into your purpose? Yeah, I love that. Okay. So there's one particular story that comes through for me, but before I go there, I want to just say like, I've been through some really hard stuff, <laughs> yeah, miscarriages, yeah, yeah. like divorce, uh, all, like all of the things, death of really close people to me. Um, and all of that, I was able to kind of carry myself through because I understood that life was working for me. And I understood that by getting in the vibration, vibrational energy of gratitude and anticipation, mm -hmm. I could create a life that I truly wanted to be in and I could learn and heal and break the cycles. Right. But one of the earlier stories and the story that keeps coming through for me that I think most women who listen to this show can relate to is yeah. when I was, I had three babies, just like I said, I had three babies under three. I was like trying to grow my business. I was doing the nap time hustle. And I had always been this, like, I've got my shit together kind of person. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can't help me. I'm good. And I would also honestly, like when people would say, let me help you, let me do this, all that stuff. I would just say like, Nope, I'm good. I've got it together. Yep. And I had my next door neighbor, her name is Sue and she's just an incredible person. And she's a teacher, a retired teacher. And, um, she would every now and then just like call me or text me like, Hey, I saw your post about you like drowning in the chaos. Can I come take the boys? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm good. I got it all together. Right. Yeah. Like, I just like, I, I just really felt like if I said yes, I would be showing my weakness yeah. and I had to have like my masculine corporate, like, no, totally. Oh you know, yeah. I'm not allowed to cry. I'm not allowed to, you know, like just that. And one day I was just in it and the doorbell rings and she's like, hi, I'm taking your children. We'll be next door. Come and get me when you're ready or just pop over when you're ready. I don't care how long you take. And off my children go. I think Austin was four months old. So he stayed with me and probably was napping and I got to like go to the bathroom yeah. and <laughs> take a shower. And I remember at first being like kind of pissed, like yeah. really lady, like you're just going to show up here in my, my chaos and crazy. Yeah. 
And she took those boys, my boys, and she did like arts and crafts and all of these kinds of things. And I remember being in the shower and I'm like, okay, I need help. And so by her saying, by me saying no to her, I'm blocking that help, right? Which would ultimately bring me some more spaciousness and joy. Yeah. But the other thing that I'm doing is I'm blocking her joy because she is a teacher and was a teacher and wants to spend time with my children and wants to create these memories and create a bond with them and give them these like really special moments. And it was in that moment that I realized like, okay, by me trying to have this front of having it all together and not asking for help and having this belief that asking for help is a sign of weakness and vulnerability, I'm not just blocking mine, but I'm blocking her joy too. And when I realized the impact I had on her, I was like, all right, got it. I need to open myself up to this. Yeah. And so throughout my, the, I mean, uh, even now I'm really strategic. Like how amazing does it feel when your girlfriend's like going to have a baby or, uh, it, their kids are sick or whatever. And you're the person that they call. Yeah. And you're the person that they text and they're like, Carrie, I need you right now. Can you, do you, would you mind picking up my son from school? Would you mind stopping by the, the, the pharmacy for this? Right? Like when we receive that, like it gives me full body chills. Like when we I got him too. That, yep. <laughs> it's like the most amazing thing, right? It brings us so much joy. Cause we're like, Oh my gosh, I can be your village right now. I can step in. But as people who are asking, it's so hard for us to feel like we're, we, number one, we're, it's going to look like we don't have it all together. Number two, it, we're going to look like we're weak. Number three, like we could list out all of the excuses because totally. I know all y'all listening. <laughs> have and those are all the joy thieves, right? Like the, those, those silly games that we play with ourselves that I'm not good enough to ask for, I'm not worthy enough to ask for help. Um, if I ask for help, then I'm weak and I'm, I'm proving to the world that I'm not good enough and all of these things. And they're actually not true. They're stories that we tell ourselves and it blocks your joy and it blocks the full reciprocation, like the full cyclicality process from being able to take place. Yeah. Because it, it also like, when you receive those messages, it deepens your bond as a friend. And yes. like, what is the thing that we all are craving so much right now in such a socially connected wor world, we're craving connection. Totally. And so to be able to be asked to, to receive and then also to give that joy to other people, it's such a powerful exchange. So I, that was the story that came through for me loud and clear when you asked that question. And so for me, like how I reclaim it now is by being open to ask for help when I need it. Yes. And yes. and not viewing that as a sign of weakness. So when when things got really hard, when things when I was going through really stuff hard stuff with my marriage and shut down my business for 6 months, I I asked for help when I needed it. And I honestly think if I were to able to give people two superpowers, mm -hmm. and I talk about this a lot, number one would be able to make decisions faster, make good decisions as a business owner. And just as a human, like, what do you want for dinner? I don't know. Choose what you want, yeah. but that, that also like taps into you knowing yourself. Totally. No. <laughs> and yeah. number two is being able to ask for what you need. Yeah. And that also taps into like you being able to know yourself. Yeah. And so when I can sit in that space of, I know what I need right now because I'm super tapped into who I am and how I show up and how I want to show up and the ecosystem I'm trying to build for myself. And I can ask for help and support by the people who I know are willing to number one, hold me at the highest version of me. And number two, serve the purpose that they're meant to serve, right? And like we could have a whole conversation about roles that our friends and, and loved ones are supposed to play, but um, it really allows me to have the spaciousness that I need. Like whether that's, I just need 15 minutes so I can get this thing done so I can be super present with my kids or I need some help. Can you pick up my kids from school? Because I've got one at the ER or, you know, whatever it is. It just, it creates deeper connection. It, fr it frees, it creates more freedom for us, creates more spaciousness for us. And over my, the last four years, having that through line and that openness to ask for help is ultimately what's given me the space to heal. Yes. Oh my gosh. Mic drop. Carrie <laughs> Keating taking us to church. Thank you. <laughs> 
And I know, I like just tapping into, I mean, we're just in the recording stages of this. This hasn't hit the ears of anybody, but I know the vibration and I know the energy. And this is really going to resonate super deeply. So thank you because our listeners are just, they, I mean, you know, you have your own podcast. Like these conversations and what we know they'll shift and, and, and help with with our women it just means the world to us. So thank you. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Yeah. And I have to now say, finally, I've been bursting to say this, the whole conversation, um, you know, and you, you just said like, we could go, we could have so many different like sidebar conversations and tangent conversations off of this. And guess what? We get to, we yeah. get to in May at the rebels for joy live event and Carrie Keating my friends is going to be one of our speakers. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Oh my I'm gosh. So <laughs> like I, and I, I've already shared this with you personally, but like when I got the hit of like, or well, when Bonnie and I decided that, okay, we're going to host a live event. It's going to be a two day event. So friends, mark your calendars, May 29th and 30th. It's a Friday and a Saturday. So you can um, have a little bit of getaway time. You can still have a little bit of weekend time with your family or your friends, whatever. We really wanted to, this to be a super supportive event. Um, that's going to be monumentally life shifting. Let's just call it what it was. Mm -hmm. But when we, we decided that we were going to do it, and that we were going to be doing it in Rockland, California. I'm like, all right, so I already know <laughs> that Carrie is going to be there. And you mentioned um, you might have dropped the the name of somebody else that made <laughs> present. So we'll just we'll we'll see if people picked up on that little tidbit. Yeah. But Carrie, I'm so honored and so excited to share that stage with you, like, girl. Yeah, the honor is mine. I mean, the fact that you reach out to me and want whatever, you know, I, I am, I am just a messenger and I am, I'm just super happy to, to fill and share space with all of your people and, and serve in whatever capacity I possibly can. So the honor and the joy is truly mine. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Okay, friends. So you heard it here first. We are actually going to be using this podcast to announce that all this is going down. So we're being, yeah pretty purposeful with, with these interviews and what we're doing right now, because it just feels so fun and juicy and delicious and, um, super expansive to be able to shout from the rooftop, starting here in this beautiful space that Kara Keating official speaker at yeah. Rebel for Joy live. Okay. Wait. So let me ask you this, yeah. Jillian. Yes. Where do people go? If they're like, wait, hold on. I need to get a ticket. Where are they? Where should they go right now? Yeah. Currently you should go to rebelsforjoy.com. <laughs> We are going to be getting super specific and we'll be sharing in the, uh, in the show notes in all the places. And we'll be sharing in the other, the previous episodes that will drop before this. Um, but right now you can get them, get them on our website. Also go to any social media platform, including my own at Jillian Bolands, including Bonnie Kelly, um, at Bonnie.Kelly. At Bonnie.Kelly. What is her Instagram? <laughs> I tag her every day. And I'm like, well, nine months pregnant. So it's okay. You don't I know I am pregnant at the time of recording this. So <laughs> I'm just going to play that little card right there. So no, it's Bonnie Kelly dot me. <laughs> I knew there was a dot in there. Um, but yeah, no rebels for joy.com. Grab your tickets. We are going to have all sorts of fun, amazing opportunities, VIP opportunities, general admission opportunities, and you get to witness Carrie Keating in her shining light because girl, you bring the joy and you also bring the, the value packed, impactful message that people always need to hear. And I'm just so grateful that you'll be on that stage. Mm, me too. I can't wait. All right, Carrie, at the end of every episode, we invite our people to say a very special thing. Do you remember? I dropped. I do. You. So thank you for being here. I love you. I love you. And you can now say thanks for listening. I am. Thank you guys so much for listening. I am Carrie Keating and I am a rebel for joy. Oh, I love you. Friends, have the most amazing day ever.